When we praise him, not when we sing, but when we praise him, we're building the house by which he can inhabit. You know, it's just, that blows me away. And if that, if that uh, worship didn't turn you on, you haven't got any switches. Yeah, that's right. It's, surely these things make our hearts so glad, so happy. My wife's looking at me funny. Just a bit closer to you. How's that? That's much better. I feel like I need something here and I'm surrounded. Oh dear. Okay, um, I'd like to just ask, just pray for a minute. Just yeah. Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, the comforter of Abba Father, that you would fill this place this morning. That you would fill every corner of this place. That you would go out over the airways. That you would go out anyway, all ways that only you can do. That you would touch people today. Let them know that your family is amazing and the only family to join in Yeshua's name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'd like to say hello to some very, very special people this morning. Um, we're blessed here today in the house to not only have our, our normal um, people here, got my spiritual mum and dad here, Bob and Ginny from Bansdale. You haven't heard of Bansdale, it's down in Victoria somewhere. Um, and I'd like to send a call out to our brothers and sisters that uh, will be watching in Wilcannia, New South Wales. And uh, especially to Nana Ulabuya. Nana, we just pray for you in Jesus' name. Yeah. It's your lost pastor, Drew. And... Um, We just pray that his spirit is all over you, that he's giving you the comfort and giving you the love and the support that you need, Nana. And um, I know that Pastor Darren and Pastor Trish are there and they love you so much. And I know that they will be, um, they'll be hugging you in the physical as we're hugging you in the, in the spirit world right now. In Jesus' name. Um, I want to talk a little bit this morning about what God says about us. All of us that came out of the world, we would have, you know, there were worldly people and we had cliques at work and we had all this stuff going on and you talk about people. And I sit there and I sat and I thought, I wonder what God says about us. One of the mainstays of this family here is to live, love, worship and function according to the word of Abba, of Abba Father, God. And we don't add to it any marketing or strategies, sales pitches, fashion statements, although this shirt's pretty good. Um, compliances with a world view, we don't comply with a world view, we comply with the view of the Father, what he says about us. Um, we don't want to look like anything except what he wants for us. When Pastor Simon and Zine heard from the Father to start a new thing in this district, I believe it was very clearly to be about the abused and those who fall constantly between the cracks of other places. And we're here to catch. We're here to catch. We're here to love. And what came together under Pastor Simon and Zine's leadership was a bunch of ragtag, broken, hurt, abused people who had found each other, the living water of the Father, the healing, the joy, the cleaning and the peace that only Abba Father and that spirit, the, the comforter, can give. In some ways, we could almost be like the, the, the 12 disciples. All of us, I suspect, at some stage in our life, were voted the most unlikely. <laughs> and here we are today. So what I want to talk about is what, if we're called, what, what Dad says about us. What does he say? As I say, yeah. As you listen, I want you to know that all of you out there and here, we're always available. And here in this house, all of us have been the recipient of a wounded body, a soul, 
moral offences, which I actually learned about this very week, just gone past. Moral uh, trauma in a course that I did on on uh, post-traumatic stress disorder for for um, combat soldiers and for um, first responders. And I've, I've learnt so much. And all of us here have had these committed against us. We've been damaged and hurt, yet we've seen the light, the light called Yeshua, called Jesus, through the clouds. We've heard his voice. We've been adopted into his family. I keep losing the place. My eyes are... I've done nothing but cry since I got here. Uh, and we've been adopted into his family. As if Ephesians 1.5 is very clear. He predestined us for adoption. Before we were born, he said, you're in, you're in, you're in. As sons and daughters through the Messiah Yeshua in keeping with the good pleasure of his will. It is his will. We are his children. You've heard us say it here before. All of us here in this place have said, we didn't choose him, he chose us. Mm. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come to me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah. Now, guys, everyone out there, this, this, this isn't for once. Yeah. This is for every day. This is for twice an hour, four times an hour. Yeah. Father, I come to you again. I stuffed it up again. Sorry, Father. Can you help me? Will you? And he'll change. Yeah. He'll change us. This lens is the verse about coming to him, speaking with him and creating that relationship with him about what burdens us, what hurts us, what haunts us. He's interested in every single bit of us. And he says every time, leave it with me. And as we grow in his family, as we grow in, his, in our understanding and capacity as a child, when a, child, when a baby's born it has no idea except it wants milk and nappy, and everyone to run around after it, right? <laughs> and with the, the, the mother care thing on the wall, everyone to listen to it as well. But it knows nothing, and we're the same. We come to him, and we're, we're, we're infantile, we're juvenile. Even the word says there's a time you will, you will uh, have milk, and then you will get into the steak and veggies. Me, I'm a steak guy, I love steak, <laughs> okay? He says to us, as we grow in the family, leave the troubles at the cross and don't take them back. Yeah. We do, we take them back. In verse 29, he goes on to say, take my yoke upon you. Every minute of every hour of every day, I'm paraphrasing, but God is not the God of one. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto yourselves. What, is, what does he think of us here? What's he giving us? Well, here the word soul is suke in, in the uh, original language, and it literally means Breath and spirit. Yeah. Okay? Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest in your breath and your spirit. Yeah. Now, who knows, after you've done a hard uh, day's work or a hard run or a hard sauna yoga thing or whatever you've done. <laughs> you said, I can't remember. But when you've worked and exerted yourself, you, it's hard to breathe. You know, and I can tell you now from a point of view of trauma and, and whatever, and some of us in this room have experienced this, things take your breath away. And when we give it back to Abba Father, when we say, I'll give it back to you because you are meek and lowly of heart, he says, I will give your breath and your spirit rest. Imagine having your laboured breath and your exhausted spirit made to relax and be at ease, repaired, loved, taught and renewed. Yeah, I'll have that, thanks. So what does, what does Dad go on to say about us? In John 3.16 he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He only had one. He didn't have a I've got five. And if he said, I want you to give up one of your sons, I go, eh, no, nah, I don't think I could. That's about as honest as I can be. And I've got five to choose from. <laughs> and I go, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. You know, my kids would be terrified. <laughs> but he only had the one. He didn't have a choice. And you know what the greatest part is? He said to his son, will you do this? And Jesus said, yeah, okay, I'm on to it. He gave his only son that whoever believes in him won't die, won't perish, won't end up in a place where none of us want to end up in, but have eternal life. Abba Father gave total sacrifice. 
Yeshua, Jesus, gave total sacrifice. They gave everything. It wasn't like, I've got a speeding fine today. Well, I got a pay. I didn't, by the way, darling. <laughs> and I've got to give someone 150 bucks. It was, I've got a speeding fine today, and I've got to give everything. And it's giving it for you. It's free. So what else does Abba Father say about us? And miracle upon miracles, I'm going to be fairly short today. In Jeremiah 29, one of my favourite scriptures, in verse 11, he says, and this is before we've said yes to him. I want you to take this away. Before we've said yes to him, while we're still in sin, he said to us, I know the plans I have in mind for you. In other words, I've got it sorted for you. What do you, I've got this going. All you've got to do is talk to me and we'll have a discussion. Yes, I used to be in sales. So if I wanted to sell someone something, I had to do what? Go, knock on their door, get an appointment, sit down with them and, and sell them something. And I used to travel the world doing that, literally. So I, there was a lot of work in that. He says, I have the plans that I, I know the plans I have for you. I, I've got it. Declares Adonai, declares the master. Plans for shalom and not calamity. Plans for peace and not destruction. To give you a future and a hope. Long before we say yes, he says, I'm, I'm there. I've already got your seat in the book. You're already there. I always get a picture of Abba Father with his big walnut desk and a big leather green top and the Lamb's Book of Life and a banker's lamp and the phone and, you know, line one, Father, line two, Yeshua, Jesus, line three, the comforter, you know, that's my way of doing it, I suppose. So he says, I've got your life sorted. Come to me, let's get on with it. All peace, no disaster, future, hope. That's what he thinks of us. So what else does he say about us? Well, in Romans 8, 39, 38, 39, he said, for I am sure. This is Paul speaking. He said, I am sure that neither death nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, that includes COVID, by the way, and other stuff, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of Abba Father in Yeshua Jesus, our Lord. Nothing can separate it. Come on, that's got to be the most exciting thing to her. We can't do it. Pastor Simon often says you cannot lose your salvation. And if you don't, that's one of your scriptures. We can't be separated from it. And we can be disobedient kids and God will smack our backsides. And he does. He says, I chasten those who I love. But we can't be separated. And yet we do it so often. A lot of us do. We turn our back and run away into the bush and we, or we go and drink or do whatever it is we're doing. And we say, Father God, no, you don't. You go, yeah, I do. I'm not a liar. There is nothing, says the Father, that can come between us. Him and me, him and my wife, him and pastor, him, him and everybody. Nothing can come between us. Not a thing. You see, all the evil one can do is remind you of your past, remind you of other people's past, but he can't get between you. And what happens is we allow it. That's it. That's right. So what else does Father God, Abba Father, Adonai, Elohim, El Shaddai. He's got these amazing names. So about us. Well, here we go. Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship. Long before we turn up and say yes to him, we're his workmanship. Created in, Abba, created in Christ, in, in Yeshua Jesus, for good works. We're not created for garbage. We're created for good works. We're created to have this peaceful life. Sort of. Which God prepared beforehand. Once again, there we go back to that. Before we've come to him, he's already got the plan written out. Yeah. That God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That's right. He built us, therefore he, when we are broken, we should go back to where we came from, the manufacturer. And we go so many other places. Oh, I'm broken, I'll go, I'm not going to say it. But, you know, we do, we go elsewhere. And all we've got to do, I mean, I used to be a manufacturer of products. If something broke, someone broke something or it broke, come to me. Mm. I know what's in the box. I'll yeah. fix it. Don't go to him. He's got no idea. I do. You know. So that's, that's, that's another thing. He knows where he, 
we're already his workmanship. And while we're on earth, still in this body, he knows we're breakable. Yeah. Okay? So what else did Abba Father say, say to, about us? Well, this is what he said to us, actually. Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at your door and knock. I don't, I don't hear this preached about too often. If anyone, that's a big door. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. Well, a meal is about the most personal thing you can do with someone. Isn't it? You invite people into your home and you're all sitting around the table and have you ever noticed how some people eat differently to others? I'm a bit of an eologist. I love watching people and what they do. You know, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, this is my way of not, uh, never having anyone come out of my face again. No, I'm kidding. Right. So, and, 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 and it is, it's a very personal thing. And this is, the, this is the Son of the Most High, the sacrificed one, coming, saying, and he's standing at the door all the time. He is constant. There's never a time when he's not knocking at your door. Even when we're walking in sin, even when we're walking in a life that is not... He's not designed for us, which he's already got written yes. down. Yes. All right, nothing like that. He's always knocking. There's never a minute. There's never a minute. There's never. But he's gentle. Yeah. He's gentle. He is very gentle, and that's some of the things that we don't get today. He's so gentle. Yeah. So, and and hey, the Creator of the universe, who spoke into being everything. Thank you, Father. He won't force himself on us. And if you ever say, well, this happened to me and where the heck's God? Well, I'll tell you what, he's standing there and he's waiting for you to have a relationship with him. Yes, Bob? <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought you wanted to go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's <in> there, bro. <laughs> so what else, what else does Abba Father say about us? You see, this is people talking about you. You've all heard it at work, haven't you? You've heard people gossiping around the thing. I oh, just see Fred, see him Friday night at the Christmas party. Fun as a doctor's wallet, goodness me. That's, yeah, I've done it. So in 1 John 4, verse 16, he said to us, so we have come to know and believe that the love that God has for us. There you go, that's what he says about us. His love for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in Abba Father. And Abba Father, God abides in him. That's pretty clear. He is love. He's told us, I am love. Yep. And you abide in my love and you will stay in it. That's right. In the case of any relationship, the more time we spend together, the more we get to know the other party. When my wife and I first met, she was terrified of me because I was doing a, a thing somewhere and she came up and, and she, the, the company she worked for, she was She's not a journalist, but she was told to come and interview me for a particular product that we were making. And she came up, and I I'll always remember this. I can remember what she wore, I can remember the carpet on the floor. And I can also remember, and I've never said this, so I'm going to say it publicly now, this false bravado. Hi, I'm Lee, how are you? <laughs> As we get to know each other better. And like this church here, this, this family here, we are... I mean, we've known Pastor Simon and Zim for a long time, we've known Pastor Bob and Jean for a long time, but the rest we've you know, only known a short time. But we are developing our relationship. We are developing our friendship. We are learning about each other. And that is what our Father calls out for us to do. This is a relationship. This isn't a dictatorship. Come on. Yeah. This, you don't go to a castle and there's five corgis on the floor and you go, yes, Master Gwen, don't beat me. There's not, that's not what it is. This is a father who takes us and puts us on his knee. Yes. What else does he say to us? He says in Isaiah 41.10, he says, Fear not. Fear not. Do not, do not be afraid. I am with you. Don't be dismayed. I am your father. And I know that as I'm speaking this, there'll be people out there in, don't do this wrong, Facebook world that are watching. Listen, listen, I didn't have a dad either. I know what it's like to grow up fatherless. But when I found this one 10 years ago, wow. And when he comes and when we let him, he comes in a vengeance. This father thing, Wow, wow, 
wow, I was an alcoholic. And he went, that's gone. Because my, my, my heart for him was true. I smoked two packets of B&H a day. Benson has it still right to me. Dear sir, we miss you. <laughs> <laughs> they don't actually, but, but you know, and I, and, I, and I said to him, I said, oh, I gave it up. And I said, you, you have it. I can't do this anymore. And he said, gone. And he does. I've seen him do it with other people, with other things. Yes. For, for, there's so many testimonies out there. And he says, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of what you say to other people, yeah. the word of your testimony. Yeah. So he says, fear not, be not dismayed. I am your Abba Father. I will strengthen you. And it's as easy as this, Father, this thing's bothering me. I'm so weak. Will you help me? Yes, son, I will. I will. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Sit on that, son, and be held up. That's really good. We don't have to be afraid. He is there all the time. Give us strength and hanging on to us. In all things. There's a couple of us in this room today that have worked in places that most people have never heard of or seen. And the fear that you find tromping through the jungle, it's there. But when you know his hand has got hold of your pants belt and he won't let you go, that's amazing. What else does Father God say about us? Well, if you flip over to Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, he says... I can do all things through him who strengthens me. What else does he do? He gives us strength. He gives us the capacity. All right? In all in his strength gained by how? Relationship with him. You know, he says we can do all things, not some things. He says we can do all things because we are. What else does he say about it? 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he says, Therefore, if anyone is in Jesus, he is a new creation. So here you've got this new creation with all this strength can do anything. Okay? The old one has passed away. And that's the important part. Listen, listen. Come to him today. I'm going to be asking later to think about this. Okay? But you must want to be new. You must want to be renewed. And it's for better, not worse. You can't sit at home going, well, I'm all right. No. If you don't know Yeshua, if you don't know Jesus, you don't know Abba Father, Mm -hmm. God, you don't know that. You don't have a relationship. You need one. I can tell you from one who didn't have one for many years, actively shook my fist to the heavens and said, get away from me. I've done that. Never do it again. I am new. I am you. No more do we have to live this way. You can give up. No, no, I'm good on time. You can give up. No more do we have to look at the same old thing in the mirror. I look in the mirror now and I, I, there's almost a, a happiness. I don't think I'm particularly good looking. As a matter of fact, there are those that have said you've got a head like a drop meat pie. But... I, I, there's, a, there's a happiness, you know, there's, and it starts here, and it goes up into your, into your, you feel it, you know it. Yes, amen. We're a new thing. So what else does Father God say about us? Well, if you go to Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17, he said, The Lord your God, son, daughter, I'm here with you. He's in your midst. A mighty one who will save I'm, I'm there to grab you. He will rejoice over you with gladness. Now get the, I love this bit. He will quiet you by his love. Listen, he will settle you down if you're feeling anxious or, or whatever with his love. He will pour out all over you. Listen, he will exalt over you with singing. Hallelujah. Ever had anyone sing over you? <laughs> I've had things thrown at me <laughs> in various jobs I've done where I wore a different type of uniform. But... And this is my dad singing over me. And, and, and I'm not even going to try and sing now because that will hurt everybody in the room. <laughs> but but you imagine him. Oh, my son, I love you. You are so awesome. You are the apple of my eye. Wow. This new life with this new completeness, this new breath, a loving father who does save us. He calms us with all of his encompassing loves. And he does. He sings over us. 
I don't even know. I can't even get that in my head, but I don't want to. Because yeah. there are some things with Abba Father that you shouldn't try and get in your head. You should keep it here. And he will yeah. tell you to differentiate between yeah. which one. Yeah. Yeah. What else does Father God say about us? Well, in 1 John 3 verse 1, he says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us. Yeah. Well, there's something interesting. That we should be called children of God, of Abba Father, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. So when Abba says this about us, what he's saying is that his love is free, it's complete, so we can come into a family, a real family, and be loved. Now this, this to me, the next one, is one of the most exciting ones. What else does he say about us? If you go to John 15, 15, he says, Henceforth I call you not servants or slaves, for the servant and or the slave, either translation, doesn't know what his Lord is up to. But I have called you friend. I have made, and I'm a little paraphrasing here, ducking back to a couple of, you are now son and daughter, which means you are now friend. For all things that I have heard my father speak, this is Yeshua Jesus talking to us, he says, I'm going to tell you. There's no secrets. It's on the table. Wow. How many times have you worked for a business or you've been in a family or you've got something going on and it's a secret? I don't know about you guys, but if I don't know what's going on with something, I, I can get quite uncomfortable to be around. I've passed a smile here. What happens in this family, it, it, as we grow and mature into it, is we have this renewed and renewing relationship. It renews us, is that we become privy to what's going on. All of a sudden, you don't have to go looking for information. It comes to you. And it comes to you in that relationship when we get before him. Yes. Father God, what do you need? What do you want? What are you doing? Well, I'm doing this. Okay. And we have a sense. Okay. He says, my spirit bears witness to your spirit. You know, people today, what do they call it? They, I have a... Oh, I can't remember the name of it. It's really silly. But anyway, I think I know this about... No, no, no. no. You hear it from Father God. My spirit bears witness to your spirit. And if we're in the family, my sheep hear my voice as the shepherd and the sheep. Okay. So where are we now? What else does Father God... I'm nearly finished. Thunderous applause. What else? So, so what else does he say about us? Where are we now? Well, the, the most exciting one, if you go to Galatians 4, 7, he says, so you are no longer a slave. You are no longer enslaved by the world. You are no longer enslaved by your lifestyle. You're no longer enslaved by the things that are around you. In my case, traumas and all sorts of stuff. And I hated this and I didn't like that and I drank way too much. But you are now a son. For me, that was important because I wasn't a son before. Now I am. I'm a son. Come on. We're a, this is the best thing we can have. We're a son or a daughter, depending on who you are. This is what we've got. This is who we are. And as if a son, then guess what else I am? I'm an heir. No more do I have to live under the shadow and the oppression of a demonic motley crew whose only power is to remind me of our past or my past family tree. Yeah. Amen. I don't own it. Get off me in Yeshua's name, in Jesus' name. I belong to you, our Father. Okay. What else did our Father say about us? Everyone in this room will know the scripture, but I have my own unique way. In 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14, he said, When my people whom over my name is called yeah. humble themselves yeah. and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, then I will hear you from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal your land. Right. Thank you, Lord. 
the more important scriptures is the next one in chapter in verse 15 once once we've said yes once we've said um, I'm now humbled and I'm praying and I seek your face father he says once you've done this now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive attentive how to get father's attention my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Here. When we pray in this house or your house or your caravan or your cabin or wherever you are, when you say to him, yes, he says, now you've got my attention. Now my eyes are open, my ears are attentive to prayers offered here. Yeah. And the next uh, verse he says, for now it gets better. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house. So that my name will be here forever. My eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. So we're not going to just, I wrote a little thing about this. So when my family who walks in my name, my paraphrasing, become humble, pray to me, seek my face or my will for their lives because it is a perfect will born out of becoming a son from slavery, learns what hurts my heart, turns from their sin, learns what hurts themselves and separates us from our Father, I will heal their lands, which also means their life, their family and their house. Thank you, Lord. By doing these things, Father, by doing these things you have caused me to open my eyes on you, says Abba Father, my ears are pricked up attentively. Oops, you've got my um, the radars up. Okay. Listening to what you are doing and saying. And as a result of this, I choose your household to wear my name. Yeah, Thank you, Lord. And my eyes watching over you constantly like a hen over her chicks. My heart will be there endlessly. Now listen, that word endlessly in the Hebrew is kole. And kole means for the whole doesn't mean part-time. It means forever. Who doesn't want that? Amen. Thank you. That's what Father God says about us. And there's a lot more. I could have kept this. I would have had a riot. So in closing... Here in this house, we're out there in Facebook world. And I've, I've written this out because it was so good, Father God gave it to me yesterday morning. If your heart is sensing a new sensation, there's something buzzing around in here. And it's a peace or anticipation or excitement or desire or ache. Then I suspect that the Holy Spirit, that the Ruach Kakodesh of Abba Father God, is standing at your door right now, knocking. He's saying, son, daughter, come on. The opening of this door is really quite simple. Simply say to him right now, I am so sorry, Father. That I have ignored the times in my life that I have sensed you knocking. I believe in you and I want to be a member of your family. I want to change. I want to be different. I want to be made different and I want to feel clean. I want to feel relaxed in my heart that you promise, that joy and that peace that you promise. I call upon you, Father, to open the door. Please sit with me and bring me in, in Jesus' name. If you've thought this, said this, Give us an email, message, text, and we will call you. We'll send you a Bible anywhere in the world, as Pastor Simon has often said. So you can read and learn. Now, there are in English, so... This is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. We are here to help you on this work. walk. We don't go, come to the Father and go, have fun with that. We're, this is not who we are. <laughs> This is not who we are. Each one of us in this room were discipled and trained and taught and loved on. Okay? So, we're here to help you. 
with all that we've done and all we're doing, you're not alone. The Father is with you, the Son is your payment, and the Spirit is your comforter. And we are your new family. We can be part of that. We can help you on your walk. We can be family with you. We are family with you for life if you seek yes to me. Welcome. Come in. Be really loved. And we want nothing from you, but we want everything for you. Thank you, Jesus. If this is you, you know how to contact us. Hop on the Facebook, the the email, and get hold of us. And, And we're there for you. Bless you all. Thank you, Pastor. Thanks, Mark. That was a great message, wasn't it? Yeah. Just while before we close, I just wanted to share what what Paul wrote in the, to the church in Rome. In Rome, Romans chapter eight, he said this. Verse thirty-one. He said, "Just follow on what Mark was saying. What then shall we say to these things? Listen, if God is for us." Who can be against us? Amen. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? You know, it doesn't matter which way you decipher that. You look in any lexicon, any Anything whatsoever. That word all means everything. Everything. Look what else he says. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Are you God's elect? If you've committed your life to Jesus, if you are a born again believer, and if you're not, why not? Today's your day. Give your heart to him. But look what he says. Look what he says. Who shall bring... A charge against God's elect. It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It's the enemy that condemns. It is Christ who died. And furthermore, is also risen. Believe that one. Who even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. He intercedes for us. Jesus goes straight to the Father and intercedes on our behalf. Now look what he says. Ready? This is it. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who? Listen. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword... As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are all accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For Listen, what Paul says, for I am persuaded. Now, this is a man that went through everything. Look what Paul was persuaded by. He says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing. So no created thing, nothing. It says, no created shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, that is great news for the believer today. Yep. Amen. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, nothing can separate you from that love. Amen. Nothing. Now that's a great way to finish the service, is it not? Because if that's not a promise that you want to hang on to, there is no other promise that you can hang on to. Because Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, not even to the end of the world. That means ever. Never. Yeah. Why don't we close in prayer? Father, thank you. Thank you for the word that Mark brought with such great vigor and, and heart. Father, I bless you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that nothing can separate us from your love. Yeah. Your word just says neither height nor depth nor any created thing. Nothing can separate us from your love. And we want to honor you and thank you for that, Lord God. 
And as we go about our business today and for the rest of the week, Lord, we pray that your blessing will be upon those that are here amongst us and those that are listening and watching. We bless you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for your love over us as we pray that in the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth. And everyone has said, Amen. 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 Thank you, people. We'll see you again next Sunday morning. Bye.